Hey everyone, welcome to this session by Simply Learn. In this video, we dive deeper into RPA by creating and executing a simple bot. So let's go ahead and look at what's in store for us. We will cover topics like why RPA, what is RPA, what is not RPA, how does RPA work, RPA software tools, what is UiPath, UiPath components, and a simple hands-on demo. So why exactly RPA? Now, consider a tech support unit that addresses hundreds of queries on the daily. Their job is to mainly guide the customer to the appropriate tech unit to help resolve the issues. Now, most of their work that they do is basically strenuous, repetitive and monotonous and not to mention time consuming. Now, RPA can diminish the workload of the human help desk by automating straightforward and definitive tasks. Complex administrative tasks like fault remediation and regular diagnostics can also be automated. All in all, RPA reduces human workload and implements tasks effectively and efficiently. So moving on to the most important question, what exactly is RPA? Robotic process automation is the use of software with artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to handle high volume, repeated tasks that previously required humans to perform. Now, some of these tasks could be addressing queries, making complex calculations, maintenance of records, or even maintenance of transactions. Now, to give you a better understanding, let's look at an example. Consider the onboarding of a recruit into an IT company. Data collection is a crucial part of the process. With that information, a new user account, email address, and access rights are generated. With robotic process automation, the user account can automatically activate a template for the onboarding workflow. Now, RPA can assess, prepare, create new joinee data, initiate mailing of offer letters, and streamline the entire information across the systems. So tasks that previously required hours to perform can now be done within a few seconds with the help of RPA. Stats show that RPA automation and accuracy can be increased to 100% and the processing speed can be made 10 times faster. RPA tools like UiPath and Blue Prism, among others, are now being deployed at top IT firms. So when you hear the term robotic in RPA, it's legit to assume that it involves robots that perform human tasks. While this is partially true, there are certain misconceptions. So what are they? So what is not RPA? RPA bots are not humanoid robots. They do not have a physical form unlike robots like Sophia. These bots cannot entirely replace humans. They are still controlled and monitored by us. And lastly, they do not possess human cognitive skills. They lack logical thinking and cannot make decisions on their own, which by extension makes them incapable of replacing humans. Now that we have a clear understanding of what RPA is and what it's not, you must be wondering how it works. So let's have a closer look at its working. The first step towards any approach is planning. In this stage, the processes to be automated are defined, which includes identifying the test objects, finalizing an implementation approach, and defining a clear roadmap for the RPA implementation. Next, we have design and development. As the name suggests, in this phase, you start developing the automation workflows as per the agreed plan. Third is deployment and testing. This phase typically includes the execution of the bots. Now, any expected outages are to be taken care of during the deployment. To ensure accurate functioning, testing of these bots for bugs and errors is crucial. Lastly is support and maintenance. Now, providing constant support helps in identifying and rectifying the errors better. Moving on, we have RPA software tools. Now, these tools typically help develop and execute bots. Some of the RPA tools are UiPath, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, WorkFusion, among others. In this tutorial, we will execute a bot using the UiPath tool. Before executing a demo test case, let's go ahead and understand what UiPath is and its interface. UiPath is basically an advanced RPA tool which allows you to create, control and execute front office and back office bots with the help of visual templates and diagrams. Now it also provides end-to-end -end automation calling it hyper automation. UiPath offers three different product suites. First up, we have UiPath Studio. Now it is a platform to create automation bots. It encompasses hundreds of activity templates and ready-made components to drag and drop. Now some of its features include GUI dashboard, which basically consists of activities like send email, display message and so on. 
It offers different types of recorders to record user actions on multiple platforms. It provides logging and exceptional handling. It also has reusable components. Now the user can create these reusable components to publish them together as libraries. The next product suite is UiPath Robot. Now they run automation bots that are created using UiPath Studio. There are different types of robots. Firstly, we have the attended robots. Now these robots work with you to speed up the service desk and the help desk. It's basically used in activities where human involvement is key. Next up, we have unattended robots. Now they operate without the human touch, maximizing the cost and performance benefits for any variety of back office tasks. The third product suite is the orchestrator. Now it is a centralized robot management dashboard where you can easily deploy, secure and manage your UiPath robots at scale. Now here's the course of action. The first step is that the user creates a bot. Next, the user has to save this project and which is later used as a process. Now once the process is created, it is assigned to a specific robot to execute it. This collectively constitutes a job and all of which is taken care of by the UiPath orchestrator. Now let's understand the UiPath interface in brief. First up, we have the recorder. Now as the name suggests, this component allows the user to record all user actions such as navigations, clicks, etc. Next up is scraping. Now it involves two components. One is the screen scraping, which is the programmatic collection of visual data. And the other one is data scraping, which is the extraction of structured data from an application. User events. Now all mouse clicks and keystrokes given by the user as input are recorded using this feature. Lastly, we have variables. Now variables are used primarily for reusing certain features. Now these variables hold different types of data and can change over time. All right, now that we have a fair understanding of UiPath, Let's go ahead and execute a simple test case. So here's what we're going to be doing. First, we extract information about books on the website that is goodreads.com. So what information are we extracting? So we're going to be extracting the names and the authors of the new released books. Then this information is going to be stored in an Excel sheet. And this Excel sheet is going to be sent over an email. So let's go ahead and execute the test case. All right, so let's go ahead and open UiPath Studio and here you go and click on new process in the top right corner. All right, and provide a name for it, say RPA, and I say create. So now this is going to create a workspace for you. This might take up a few seconds. And this is what the typical UiPath Studio interface looks like. So moving ahead, we need to create a sequence of activities. So for that, let's go ahead and say new sequence to the top left corner and provide a name for it. I choose to keep it sequence. So I say create. Uh, but what exactly is a sequence? Now sequence is a set of activities. So all the activities mentioned in a sequence are executed in the same order. All right. So now in our use case, we are going to be scraping data from the goodreads.com website, right? Okay, so now we'll have to navigate to the goodreads.com website. And I've opened it in my browser. So here, we've navigated to the most popular books published in March 2020. So now I have to extract data from this, right? I need two fields. Basically, I need the name of the book and the author. All right. So what we're going to do is we go back to UiPath Studio and click on data scraping. So go ahead and click on data scraping. And here it says open your browser or application and wherever you want to extract your data from. And then we click on next and then click on the field that you want to select. So I say next and here I want just the name, right? So I click on the name and it says you selected an entire table cell. Would you like to extract the data from the whole table? No, I just want the name of the table, right? So I say no. And now the next thing you need to do is you have to create a pattern. The tool needs to understand what exactly you are extracting. So what we do is we have to create a pattern. To do that, we have to select a second element. So I say next again, and I click on the second name here. I say click, and now the name of the column that I wanna give. So I say books, and I say next. Now, so this is how it's gonna look. This is the data preview, right? So next we need the name of the author. So I say extract correlated data here. So go ahead and click on that. And now I need the name, so I say, I click on Sarah J Maas and again to create a pattern I need to select another element so I say next and click on the next name of the author so I click on this and I give the name author for this column all right 
so I click on next okay so this is how it's going to look so after this I say finish all right so now it's going to ask me if data is spanning across multiple pages now in our case if you look at this page data is not spanning across multiple pages say suppose you had one two three four five saying there are more books ahead then that would be data spanning across multiple pages so that is not the case here so I say no in our case and that is it so we have scraped our data from the website okay so now that we're done with data scraping the information that has been extracted has to be saved in a CSV file so for that you have to create the file so go to your activities and say write CSV all right so just drag and drop the activity here now it asks for two fields right so the first one is a target field where the information is stored so provide a name for it for that let's go ahead and browse it and in my case I create a document say demo one underscore RPA and save it all right and the next field is a write from field now the information that you're storing in the CSV file is basically the output of data scraping so that is all the information from the data scraping event is stored in an output variable so click on that and here you see you have an output variable so copy the output variable control C and then paste it here all right now save the file and now let's execute it to see if it successfully works so go ahead and click on play so all right it's completed the execution so let's go ahead and check if it has completed the execution correctly so I go back to my documents UI path and we have demo one underscore RPA open that and here we go we have the name of the author and the book all right so this works completely fine okay so the next step in our use case is to attach the CSV file and send over an email now for that you have to provide your credentials that is your email ID and the password now these credentials are also used multiple times across the test case so instead of specifying it every time we can create two variables right one for the email ID and one for the password so for that click on variables here and say create variable and okay we have one already here so let's call it email and the other one is called password so go ahead and provide your credentials so I provide my email ID and then my password okay and then save it all right now we have to attach this CSV file and send over an email right for that we have an activity called send SMTP mail message so go ahead and drag and drop it here and now it has three fields it has the to field the subject field and the body field right so to is where you provide the email ID so here I just say email because I've already defined a variable the next is the subject so I say attachment and say the body I'll keep it simple and say PFA okay now we have to attach the file right so click on attach files and here we have to provide the path to the file so go back to the place where you've saved your CSV file and copy the path and paste it here as an expression and at the end you provide the name of the file so it was demo1 underscore rpa dot CSV okay so now go ahead click on ok now we have a lot of other fields to provide here as well so here we have the port field now the SMTP port that we're using is number 465 so go ahead and provide that and the server is basically smtp.gmail.com all right and again we have to provide the email IDs that is just email and this is just password and then two is also provided already and the sender is again me so I say email again and the password is again password all right so now save it 
okay and as you can see there are no errors that means it's good to go okay so let's go ahead and execute this and see if it executes successfully so go ahead and execute it all right so it has successfully finished its execution so now let's go to my gmail account and see if i've received any email and yes i have so go ahead and click on that and here i download the file and see if it's appropriately sent and here we go so here we go we have the name of the book and the author okay so with this we've successfully implemented an rpa bot for email automation now uipath also offers so many features that you can play around with to create more advanced rpa bots so i hope you found this video helpful thank you for being here keep learning and stay tuned to simply learn Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.